So remember when I called the February slash March quality of life update two to three updates in one? Yeah. I might need to amend that. For you see, even after another Wolfgang rework, a change to a late game raid boss, and all sorts of crafting slash miscellaneous tweaks, the hotfixes have just kept coming. We have hotfix number 5, that once again touches on Wolfgang, Hound Waves, Seed Packets, and more. Hotfix number 6 here really focuses on Wolfgang again, while also granting us more freedom with the crafting menu up and running. And finally, hotfix number 7 goes and makes fishing in the Oasis Lake less of a hassle out of flipping nowhere. And on top of that, all sorts of other nonsense. Folks, this is just an update that doesn't know when to stop. Which is exactly why Beardo is here to relay as much information as he can so that none of us miss out on what is truly going to change and don't stop together later this month. Take, for example, a rather small change somewhat thrown into the mix of all this without much fanfare, and yet it is one of significance. Our new ability to specifically disable fire and or ice hounds that spawn within hound waves themselves. So Mega Basers rejoice. Oh, but I'm not too sure anything listed here today is gonna top how important of a change this next one is, everyone. As tanking Wolfgang is back. Yes, indeed. Clay has gone and straight up removed the Mightiness Drain from getting hit altogether without any attempts of any adjustments to the mechanic overall. In short, Wolfgang is once again insanely powerful. Hold F and win essentially. And while all that is certainly up for debate, I'm just here as a messenger, so let us move on to some other Wolfgang changes, like how his Mightiness will fall over time much faster than before. A very recent change has increased the passive might in this train to be roughly two times the original, which might not appear to be all that much at first, but as you can see, over time, it will be impactful. But some other notes. Wimpy Wolfgang is now the only form that will punch with dumbbells instead of swinging them overhead like any other weapon, making for far better DPS overall moving forward through said Wolfgang phases. And lastly, Wimpy Wolf will no longer take 25% more damage per hit and is back to taking normal damages from everything. Coupled with his first rework, the beta rework, and bloody everything in between, it's not bad. But let me know your thoughts on all the changes we've been discussing down in the comments. Cause for now, we have got some fashion to talk about. Folks, for whatever reason, fashion goggles now no longer need to be fished out of the Oasis Lake and can be made via a science machine immediately. Not only that though, potted succulents have also been removed from the lake's blueprint pool and can be made via an alchemy engine instead. Now this one I get, as heck, I kinda campaigned for it in the last video for Pete's sake. And I do actually understand why both blueprints have been removed from the lake, as it makes fishing out the desert goggles blueprint now a little easier but I can't shake the feeling that we're somewhat inching close to the discussion of why the lake here exists in the first place, especially if desert goggles ever do get the same treatment. And who knows, perhaps they honestly should, and the lake should be reworked somehow. But do not forget that desert goggles also now provide a pretty decent summer insulation factor, so that's nice. Moving on though to yet another tweak to the seed packet that has essentially made the backpack in ice boxes equal when storing seeds. In short, seeds now last twice as long compared to the other hotfixes 25% bonus spoilage time. Not bad. And neither are any of the many, many changes to the new crafting menu since we've last talked, folks. Like how we can interact with it, as well as how we can interact with the world while within it. For one thing, I am sure you immediately noticed the added colors to the icons, and that has been a lovely touch. For another, however, the icons themselves have changed and are much more stylized than previous iterations. Now, I'm not too sure how I feel about these myself, as they kind of feel mobile gamey, but I think we all still kind of need more time to get used to things. But some true quality of life updates to the menus would be being able to rotate our cameras now, having the ability to perform actions with the crafting menu open, and heck, 
We can even fight while holding F with it open now to... All great changes. An independent zoom and menu scrolling is also welcomed, as I was literally just complaining about it just yesterday. And while I did just call myself a mere messenger, I still would like to bring one thing up. The quote-unquote research at action. Be it standing by or literally clicking on certain crafting stations, the game now very kindly opens up a menu with crafts very specific to said station. And that's a no-brainer, am I right? But my question is, why don't any of the others do the same thing? Now I get why science and alchemy machines don't do that to an extent as they kind of list way too many graphs, but why not let shadow manipulators open up the entire magic tab? Why doesn't the terra firma tamper open the turf tab? And so on and so forth. And the only reason I am bringing any of this up is because the most recent hotfix made it to where some of these stations do this exact thing. So all I'm saying is, we're getting there. We're so close, we just need some patience. And before we go, I would like to mention many other changes outlined in these posts that are doing exactly that. Adding up to actually get us there, if you know what I mean. Hotfix number five, adjusted initial hound wave spawns to come later than usual, improved the crafting menu search bar, which is super helpful actually, and provided a ton of help to controller users when it comes to navigating said crafting menus. Hotfix number six did even more to help controller users, and by my account, things are really starting to look great there now. But the update also fixed all sorts of bugs to varying degrees, as maybe some of them could have been labeled as features, i.e. exiting the game to mess with mob waves and or a toadstool cheese method involving some farm plots, and that one stings a little bit, as I was just about to use it. But finally, hotfix number seven fixed even more more bugs in an effort to refine one of the biggest updates this game has ever seen, and that is noteworthy in and of itself. Seriously, this was thought to be a mere crafting UI change update that was going to throw in a cheeky little ancient guardian tweak, but it has turned into a monster of overwhelming proportions. Now I'm doing my best to digest and then regurgitate it for all the folk out there. And while that sounds wrong, I'm hoping it's making things right as we go along. I have absolutely no idea when all of this is going to come out for realsies, but with how huge hotfixes are coming out every two to three days, I imagine it's not going to be anytime soon, folks. So I guess I'm just going to have to wait and see and stay on top of it just for you. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.